Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. Let me just show you the amazing voucher code you can use if you want to become a premium member at Chess24 and take part in these Banter Blitzes. You can even challenge the likes of Magnus Carlsen, other Grandmasters, International Masters, Celebrities. So the voucher code King's Crusher gives you 15% off. If you just go to chess24.com slash premium, so that's 15% uh, off there. Okay, let's go into the uh, game challenges today. Hi there. Right, and the first challenge today, nine juice. Hope audio and visual is okay. Uh, let's try e4. <clears throat> and a Smith Moore again, let to start off with. You can choose um, either three minute or five minute, I don't mind either, whatever you prefer there. Not that question there. Okay, so I'm going to test this um, d5 here. Yeah. It looks as though I'm getting a, a kind of aggressive center. And um, in fact, you know, I'm wondering if, you know, e5 might be possible on knight f6. Or castle here. I'm quite pleased uh, with the pawn center. At the moment, I mean, Queen H4 looks logical to play essentially F5 and Bishop H6 soon. So, F5 and um, Bishop H6 might be a logical way of trying to undermine the dark squares around the king later. The downside is uh, the E5 square. At the moment, the knight's gone away from that important square, though. So, uh, f5 and bishop h6. Interesting. Okay. Actually, here maybe uh, e5 is, is a little bit dangerous. If bishop takes, e takes. Oh, mind you, bishop f6. And it's provoking. Um, Maybe, okay, bishop e3 just in case. I thought maybe there's a tactic here, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't need to play that. This move just connects the rooks. But yeah, I should be looking out for tactics like that. Um, possibly here, bishop d4. Or just maybe just King H one for a moment, just to get the king out of any firing line. Maybe it would be desirable to play a rook c one for knight b five. <clears throat> okay, I'll put this bishop back. Although it is the case that maybe would he want to give up the bishop for a pawn? Maybe that's that's something. Hmm. I wonder, do I have rook c1 there? Maybe rook c1 is... Oh, well rook c1 here looks rather dangerous indeed. Knight b5 looks to be checkmating the queen. Uh, although bishop takes it's two pieces for the queen, it looks to be like winning the queen. Um, yeah, because any time this is played, I mean, that knight's loose as well. I think knight b5 to try and win the queen here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take this anyway. Yes, this looks as though that's gone slightly wrong there. Um, maybe just... E e five looks tempting. 
even if I give up the d5 pawn here, it seems rather dangerous for black. Um, maybe knight g5. Knight g5 looks dangerous. So there's knight f7, or if the f4 moves, knight e6. So, uh, yeah, this looks yeah pretty dangerous. The bishop's quite active here. Okay, so I think knight takes f7 is plausible. Followed by e6, maybe. e6, and then. Oh, actually, I can take there because the bishops. Yeah, I, I can take here, I think, because the bishop's on f1. Okay, I can take back. I could take this one. And I think I'm just going to simplify here, taking this guy out. All right, my opponent's resigned. Thanks, my juice. Okay, the next challenge. Um, whoops. <laughs> Iron M Manth. Hi there. So knight c6, and we go into a standard classical opening. I think this is the Smyslov defense with an early g6. Maybe I should take care in the light of B4. B5. Yeah, I think if I'd played knight takes, there was check and then D5. Let's not be too greedy. In the opening, when the king's still in the center, as they say, active operations, when you haven't castled, they're often backfiring. So uh, I checked it out for a moment, I must admit. But, <laughs> but in principle, yeah, it's dangerous to do such things. Yeah, I kind of like the position now a little bit more. <clears throat> I think that's a tactic, knight c3 for bishop c4. If the rook moves, you know, maybe knight d4. Um, it's quite forcing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm hitting the queen and the rook. I think, you know, from a positional perspective here, I I would like the light square bishop without the counterpart and the blockade square, d5, which I can use to threaten the bishop takes f3 sometimes. So I like the blockade square. Although... It's not that brilliant, is it? Maybe queen g5 is worth just try and provoke some weaknesses here with queen g5. Okay. 
Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, do I keep the queens on? Or queen of sex? Oh, fascinating. Mm. I think there's knight e5. I just realised I can do some structural damage with knight f3 check there. I think I'll do that. So I'll flick in knight f3 for some structural damage. Just realised this. Desperado. Well, his queen's hanging. That was the point. You know, if queen takes, I was going to play knight f3. Jack, and just to get a structural advantage. Okay, a um, bit of a blunder there. Okay, thanks. Uh, I can. Right there. Okay, so uh, classic knight f3. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll play the, the knight here. This is a bit of a novel. And I, I kind of, I have actually done well with this gambit. I, I'm going to try this, create, I'm probably going to lose, but I'm going to try the Halloween gambit here for a laugh. I think it's a little bit fun, especially around Halloween, to play the Halloween <laughs> gambit. It's a, it's a fun line, I think. There are various defences that are, have been established, but uh, maybe my opponent's not going to play perfectly against that. Uh, sometimes it can be really kind of dangerous. Oh, so there... Not sure about that one. <clears throat> Bishop G five. That affords me knight d five. There's no queen before I take. Knight d five looks remarkably dangerous. Now I can take the queen off. There's also a check. So slip in. Okay, I think this is uh, a good outcome from the opening. Maybe h5, h6. Yes, yeah, so that wins the bishop. I think this is more than a good outcome. I think just put more pressure on the pin. And take that guy off. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that it can be dangerous. That Halloween gambit. Uh, Brandison, hi there.
So this week I've been checking out games from this classic book, uh, The Art of Attack, um, which has been revamped with Simon Williams. It's worth checking out. Uh, King's Rush TV slash Art of Attack. Uh, so Chessable works very nicely at the moment with uh, Chess24. Our Lord and Master Magnus Carlsen, I think, is uh, owning <laughs> both sides. I think it's okay for me to mention that chessable book and I've seen it being advertised here as well so I think yeah I've been working on uh, illustrative games from New Art of Attack this week and I do find them quite joyful to check over and it seems also there's a actually there's a historical context it seems to every single game so far recently that I've been checking out uh, so some of the games have been played in dark times like um in the middle of World War Two, just after World War Two, pretty dark times. These players, these old champions of the past, had to they had real difficulties outside of chess for no fault of their own. Uh, so uh, that's I think that has to be factored in as well uh, when you look at their games. Um, I don't think we've got it that bad. Okay, we've got Corona, but it's not as bad as all of that. Well, it is quite bad, but okay. Knight takes e6. I'm forking the queen and the bishop here. Then there's knight g7 and bishop h6. Okay, yeah, that's that's a bad. Yeah, that's that's a nasty fork there. Um. Okay. Okay, I did have a look at some Argentinian players recently as well. <laughs> um. Miguel Nydorf and uh, some of the player recently checked out Pilnick. I think Pilnick got a game in Bobby Fisher's my 60 memorable games of chess. <coughs> Pardon me. So knight f8, knight e6 to f4. Or is it maybe it's better with knight to h5 to f4? This f4 seems kind of handy. Yeah, I don't think white wants to play g3 necessarily. So this looks like a classic sort of, you know, uh, a classic recipe just to get into f4. King's Indian classic recipe so far. h6 and uh, bishop h6. Um, it seems a lot of these players they it's kind of fortunate in a way at some point they were stuck in some tournament and they and they had the option of go home or not which is some, sometimes saved their lives actually it's quite fortunate and it happened it seems quite a few times for when I'm checking out uh, Mm, okay, so knight f4 anyway. Um, queen c8, bishop h3. Queen c8, or bishop h3 immediately. I don't think that does anything. But I think queen c8, bishop h3 for queen g4. If I have my queen on h3, that will be sort of mating. Queen c8 for bishop h3. It's crude, but how easy it is it to parry that? Alright, so that is interesting. Okay, I've got the dark square bishop without the counterpart. I can I afford to weaken these light squares? So maybe Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, it could be a problem. All right, maybe bishop f five here, trying to put some pressure on rather than g five. Because I think knight e four to f six is gonna happen. Uh, I'm persuading knight e four at the moment. Oh there's um Bishop e4 here to undermine e5. I think that's a massive opportunity, sort of weakness in the last move. If I play bishop e4, I think that's a big opportunity to hit e5 here. 
All right, okay, maybe C5 first. And then Bishop F3 would be fantastic news. Surely. Or maybe I'm getting this slightly wrong. It's possible. This knight looks kind of dangerous. All right. Okay, there's some danger. Can I play rook h8 or am I getting slaughtered? I've got an eye on h3 here. Okay, there's some tactics here. King h5, king g6, queen d3, king takes, queen h7 is mating, isn't it? I'd rather just hit h3 than take this exchange. So rook here for h3, that seems much more logical than take here. The bishop's kind of guardian on the dark squares anyway. Just want to hit h3 here. It's giving me that open road to the king. Yeah, that was interesting, very interesting. Uh, so, uh, okay, um, will I be fried by fried all this week? Um, I I don't know what to play. <laughs> oh no, it's going to be London system torture, is it? Ah, oh, something different. <laughs> okay. Now Andrew Martin's mentioned this hyper accelerated Finchetto system. It can be. He mentioned it's quite kind of dangerous in Blitz, and I have used it in Blitz and Bullet in recent months. So it's not a position I'm totally uncomfortable with. I would hope. <laughs> it's, it's all going to plan at the moment. I think. Knight, bishop d7, it might be a handy move. Right, why why would he be gambiting this pawn? I don't exactly know. Is it just a mistake? I will just take this pawn, this knight d4, cat's meowing quite loudly. If queen e7, bishop e5, I lose my queen. Blame the cat. Um, so I don't know, it's been a horrible trap. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not the only one that can feed the cat, by the way, in the house. I'm not, I'm not being cruel to cats here. My brother's in the house, so he can feed the cat. So queen takes knight d4, queen b6, bishop b5. Bishop d7, I lose castling rights. Is that the worst that happens here? I just want to work out the absolute worst that happens. Queen takes, knight f4, queen b6, knight c3. Okay, I think the worst that happens is I just go to b6, not d7. So knight d4, queen b6. Not queen d7 because there's bishop b5. Okay, I'm just putting the queen back. A little bit after nicking that pawn after I said you shouldn't nick pawns in the opening okay I'm hitting e4 though with a tempo gain this is a little bit awkward I think I should be happy here with this opening outcome yes it looks as though maybe even h5 h4 classic is possible. All right, that gives me a nice e5 square and form pawn. And I'm wearing the form pawn t shirt today, by the way. <laughs> Got the form pawn, wearing the t shirt. It's a superhero of the chessboard, I say. The form pawns. Once you have the form pawn, you can be less worried, I believe. Okay, so why is he giving me e4? Is is there, another, is there a trap here? 
Why can't I just take E4? I'm going to take E4. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. Uh, I suppose my king could be in trouble, potentially. Queen b3 could be a handy move to try and cause some nuisance stuff if I need to. Rook e5. All right, it's as if he's winning the exchange, really. But I think the easiest way to lose the exchange without regret is on e5. Because uh, I would have the form pawn and the bishop pair. Okay, so queen b3 here looks as though it's super annoying if my queen wants to be relevant. Okay, so bishop g4 looks super relevant just for these light squares. I would have, I, th I think I should have a few plans here on this exchange sack. A4, A3 is one of them to be very, very annoying with that dark square bishop about the counterpart. Winning that pawn looks terminal. Okay, I can set up a solid king safety with F5, I think. I would hope. Um, I hope I'm not going to be proved wrong. Just to blunt that F file. Okay, I can keep the bishop or not. Oh, this is Queen G5. Oh, maybe things are getting tricky. Hmm. There's no rookie two here by any chance. Okay. If I if I go here, I'm a bit worried about the clock now. I'm down a minute. A bit worried about the clock. Yeah, I don't mind him sort of taking the exchange. Please take the exchange. Simplify the position a bit. Take the exchange. Uh, please take the exchange. No, not taking the exchange. Okay. <laughs> A4 then it is. Is A3 actually doing anything? What about Queen B4? Is that doing anything? I haven't got anything that concrete, have I? Or oh, Bishop? Ah, oh, Bishop G5. Well, and Bishop G5, to, I mean, Bishop G to H6, coming up. I think my position in the centre is really cool here. Um, okay, there is, there is a prospect of Rook A3. Isn't there Queen takes and Rookie one nearly, or rookie one coming up. This form pawn must mean something here. Oh no, am I messing up? Oh, there's a tempo game with rookie three. 
As bishop d4, bishop f3. Is he sacking back the exchange after bishop f3? Because bishop d4 seems super strong with double checks in view. He sacks the exchange. This looks super strong. Oh, resignable. Okay, yeah, the bishop has quite vicious. Um, it looks super dangerous. It does look super dangerous to me. This this is without the counterpart. All right, thanks to the game there. That was very, very interesting. Okay. Um, Teja. Hey there. Hey, Teja. Okay, so this line I don't mind usually d5 to try and contest the center and the f5 square. I'm not going into a trap, am I? I hope not. I'll try and protect the queen soon with knight f6. I don't like unprotected pieces. The centre has been blown wide open. If I have, mm, maybe it's plausible to play queen h5, bishop b5, c6, I would hope. Knight b5 is dangerous on oh, bishop d6. I'll reserve for bishop d6, knight b5. That's a little bit miserable, actually. Maybe knight b5, castle, queen side is best. I think this okay, is on my queen here. If I do this. Bishop c5. There's, there's some dangers here. I've got some weak pawns. Knight f2. This knight f2 looks appealing. If he takes on e4, um, what would I play? Maybe rook f8? If he takes here, knight takes f2. Knight takes f2. But I'm hoping for rook f8. Some focal point, common square. D8's a bit vulnerable, that bishop there. Potentially that's a mate. I can't kick this. I could play knight. Oh, he's moved that away. Knight f4 seems plausible for e5. e5 and h6. h6. I wonder, um, uh, c4, b6, if he wants to play for c5. Mm, that's, anyway, the, guard, the bishop's guarding c5 anyway. There is also knight h3 here, but it doesn't do anything, maybe king h1. For the moment, I think I'm going to try and bolster the knight. I think bolster's the right word, don't usually use it, bolster, the knight. h5 for h4. Would it matter about bishop f5? Okay, I think 
the pawns coming together as one island maybe g4 h4 g3 that sort of thing would be desirable if i have a form pawn on g3 so h4 g3 i mean that would work well with the bishop doesn't matter about the exchange so i want to get this um g3 in but maybe with bishop c5 first okay so bishop c5 for g3 incoming g3 keep the bishop around for the pin right okay that's a good test now if here there's check or is that well he moved the king there's a cheapo but c5 may be the way to play this i hope i'm not exposing too much other things in the process like b7 i just want to maybe play b6 and then g3 soon g3 here okay now maybe this is the way to play it maximum pressure on f2 in fact rook takes h3 is going to be mating after rook h2 well he would have to give up the rook so i think rook takes f2 looks pretty dangerous for h3 Hmm. Okay, h3 here, there's bishop g4. I'll just put the king away from the knight square for a moment to avoid this bishop g4 resource. Bit of prophylaxis. So if I have h3, I'm undermining the bishop. There's h2, a very big protected pass pawn. And on king h1 or king f1, bishop f2. I think h3 incoming is is looking pretty dangerous even though it's opposite color bishops I think white's very passive here given I've got h3 h2 this might be better than g tanks because I don't know king f1 there's blockade potential so I think I'd rather play it like this to get h2 in Okay, let's just check here. But I think it doesn't matter. I think this is too dangerous. Okay, yeah, thanks, Toja. Yeah, interesting. Um, Tamilson, hi there. I'll play this um, two knights, maybe even Halloween Gambit again, if knight f6. It's a bit of fun, isn't it, Halloween Gambit? All right, here, I think this is um, a known mistake, actually. I think knight takes e5 is supposed to be good, unless I'm getting this all wrong. I think this is one of the major perks, actually, of playing these two knights. It's this little positional trap to grab more than a fair share of the center. <clears throat> Possibly on, um, yeah, on bishop d6. Taking f4. Right, I think I've got a nice center. Yes, this is a little positional trap. I think it's well known in the two knights. Uh, so bishop c4 
and um, if d takes that bishop f7 so I think bishop c4 is good here against d takes and it develops a piece I think this is working bishop takes f7 the other thing is okay okay that's interesting maybe I should just um, Queen h5 is tempting just to create some weaknesses but just taking this pawn is also just it's tempting just to take this pawn okay I can try and encourage some extra weaknesses with g6 just put the Queen back and this diagonal is more loosens on g6 pawns they go backwards principles here queen e2 and then look forward to that diagonal later and this is something more tactical with queen b5 here. I, th I think I'm just going back to e2 creating that as weaknesses but if they're exploitable or not is another question okay so knight f6 well the knight's not so solid after bishop g5 in any case okay this looks very nice if I just castle <coughs> queen side yeah oh I've just made a mistake <laughs> yeah I know as soon as I, I saw <laughs> I just made a mistake yeah I that looks I don't intend that I didn't intend rook f2 whoops <laughs> F3 would have been more prudent. Yeah. I was maybe I was overexcited there. The castle queen side of rook f2. I think probably better is um the best shot is queen c4 here, looking at e6 anyway. I mean, maybe it's not so bad. But it's game on again. It's game on again a bit. Okay, also this C two pressure with this rook. So there could be some dangers with rook C eight. Can be pretty terminal actually quickly, quite terminal if I'm not careful. Hmm. I wonder if. E5 for knight e4 later, or immediately knight e4, maybe immediately knight e4. If we took rook d7, if it doesn't, there's knight f6, which is winning the exchange. It's possible that knight e4 is actually a decent move on d5. Okay, so the suspense. Yeah. D five knight e four to get into f six. Oh no no, there's rook c two check. As I mentioned earlier. <laughs> okay. Try and make Oh, this is getting very, very dangerous. I can't can't kick this rook out. Can I do this to try and get a bishop h6 for rook f8 sometimes? I have the exchange of queens here. Is that, is that very grovelly and worse here? Okay, king v1 maybe to start off with. No, I messed this up. I messed this up big time. I think black's fine here right now. The clock advantage is probably significant. All right, it's a blunder. It looks like a weakness of the last move. It's not sporting. B6. Maybe 
that was a very good position, I think, that I had. Um, after that, rook f2. I should have just played f3, I think. Uh, okay. Um, still game on here. Rook d1. It's not over till it's over. Rook d1. All right, here I get in knight e4 to f6. If knight e3, bishop takes e3. All right, I will put the knight in. Okay, I think I can just take the queen. I'm hitting the rook. If I take the rook off, the last chance has been back row mated. All right, thanks to the game. Yeah, that was that was uh, yeah. Um, blend, blunder panda. Okay, let's try g6. This hyper accelerated Vincenzo variation. Going into sort of, I hope it's a comfortable looking King's Engine. All right, okay. It's a solid line for white, as far as I remember. Knight e5, I don't really want to be dismantled with my pawns being weak in a hurry if I have this c5 as an issue. I'm trying to play with a solid pawn structure. So knight e5 here. Okay, this, the pawn structure seems fairly stable right now. Maybe knight g7, a6. <clears throat> okay, or f5, there's knight c5. So knight c5 is the clear and imminent threat right now. Can I stabilize with b6 against knight c5? It's like b6. Okay, just try and clamp down. I'm giving up that b5 square, but maybe it's not such a big deal. This this is the bishop without the counterpart. I want some action on dark squares in general, where the opponent hasn't got that dark square pressure. Weakening b5, it's kind of not such an aggressive knight if it goes to b5. Knight g7 for f5 would take out that e4 square. If I take out that e4 square, then bishop d4, f5, bishop d4, queen f6, I'm covering e6 with the knight. So let's imagine, well, queen f6, it looks pretty solid right now if I play queen f6. Maybe double behind bishop, rook a7 to e7. Well, this could be a loose piece sometimes with, you know, exchange sack. Um, rook a7 to e7. If I put the rooks behind here, I don't think there's anything too significant about doubling the rooks there. What about, is a4 something much better to play a4? Probably, I think, some structural damage there against White's structure. Looking at 
Okay, the knights to g4 if the rook wasn't there. But the bishop is protecting the queen. So I think structural damage. One bit of a concern creeping in. Alright, if I take this A file for a moment, the rooks are protecting, uh, protecting each other. Rook A2 and Bishop D4. Alright, okay. Is F4 possible for G5? He's getting Queen E4. All oh, right, that could be quite dangerous. Aha! Uh -huh. I can I can get to play f4. I don't have to follow up, surely, with uh, g5 for a while. Look, h4, and then g5 after knight g2. g5. There's queen e4. If I exchange off one pair of rooks, h4, g5 coming in. If I exchange off one pair of rooks, I think that might help. Although I don't know exactly why that would help. If I force, I lose f four soon. This gives me knight h five anyway. I don't think any. I think allowing g five is the lesser. Evil. I can just take out one pair of rooks and bring this guy back just in case F4 is an issue. That's fascinating. I can't really see an immediate plan uh, <coughs> for me. <clears throat> He's going to be playing G5. It's committal. It gives me the h5 square. I don't know what I do with h5. Knight h to g3, it's, it's pointless. Knight f5, he might snap that off. I'm going to d4 if he doesn't snap that off. Maybe that's the way to play it. And now g5, and then knight f5 to d4. <clears throat> ah, okay. Now, that's getting scary. If g5, queen e4, h6, queen h7... King f7. That should be safe enough. The knight's been kept out of the game. I think that's the key consideration. Queen e4, h6, queen h7, king f7. I think I'll go with that. Even though I said I wasn't going to do that earlier, I'm going to do that now. He hasn't got rook a1. So I don't think coming around here if my king's on f7 is on the cards. So queen e4, h6, queen h7, king f7. This knight's been kept out of the game. I'll go here in advance with king f7. Although he could be... Oh, hang on, there's an f3. I've just noticed there's an f3 move here. He has got check and bishop g6 check. Even so, that looks very dangerous. After king e7, would he be second exchange? Bishop g6, king e7, rook e5, queen e5. Alright, so queen e5. I'm still holding g7. In fact, I'm covering an escape square, so rook here is more effective for rook a1. I think just going for the kill here with rook a1. Mind you, there's knight f5. Whoops. <laughs> oh, crikey. No, I've, I've missed, missed that up. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see the impact of that. Okay. Okay, I'm in big trouble because this knight's going to win that pawn over there. This is big trouble. Oh, all d6. Okay. 
Plan B, win on time. <laughs> Knight F5, he's winning 8 6. Oh crikey, oh crikey, oh crikey, oh crikey. All right, why is he giving me B3? There was Bishop C2. Taking for C4 looks almost like F5, C3, Knight E3. Okay, he's trying to. Okay, I think it's almost as important to move fast as well. I can't get to. Um... That's pre move time. Sorry, oh that was that was that was just I knew the time factor. <laughs> I thought I had it all under control. <laughs> but knight f five changed the picture. I just want to go back to that crucial position. I thought I was I thought it was under control until knight f five. That's the nature, the horrible nature of chess. Okay, so I missed the threat. So King D8 unpinning, apparently, but it's only just equal here, apparently. I wanted, I was so you know, lucrative, lucrative for rook here for check, because like you know that check is more dangerous if the knight has to go back. So this is a total, yeah. Was that that made things worse? King D eight. I see. Check the knight E eight. Doesn't have to win the rook. Oh, it's complicated, isn't it? But white is slightly better at least. So apparently, this when I played is just making it hugely better for white. I thought. Um, coming up here that just protect with bishop c2 oh it's not needed white's just winning there whoa well played Difficult to regroup after such game. Regroup, refocus. These things and these things. Okay, so d6. I've had this sort of position before, trying to cling on to the pawn and the dark squares. I was inspired, I think, by uh, watching a game of Mark Hebden with the black pieces. And he seemed to adopt this strategy. And I, I, I adopted it just looking at this game, actually. <laughs> just, yeah, this Mark Hebden game once. I just was looking at it. Oh, this is nice. Uh, dark squares. And, yeah, I adopted this. Okay, so knight e7 to g6. It looks solid on the dark squares for black here right now. If as long as I don't get torn to shreds on the F file. Um if A five D five, maybe. Just to try and keep things closed. 
Or can I do better with D takes here? I I like I don't know about D takes because you know it's opening things up for knight b5 later. I think this keeps things more solid in principle. And maybe you know bishop g4 is coming up and knight f5 later just to sort of uh, put more pressure on d4. So pinning that knight, knight f5, taking out the knight, taking out d4 later would be an ambitious plan. On h3, there's bishop h5. Okay, so this changes, uh, you know, a lot of the plans. If, if he's doubling the pawns, I, I don't have to have my pawns doubled. I think I lost a few ga a game a few weeks ago with double pawns. is quite horrible. Okay, so here, um, knight f5 seems plausible, though. There is significant pressure on d4 emerging. I think I'll go for this. The double pawn seems to just strengthen d5 there. If I have g4, surely I'll have d d4 after. And also, yeah, it looks it looks good. The queen's protecting g5 here. I think I'm going to have g4. G4 looks looks pretty dangerous with this incoming knight takes d4. M mind you that you know f4 is weak. That's the problem. Can't have everything. But, you know, is it a peace sack, G4? He would just take, is it a pig sack, potential? Oh, I'm not sure about this one. Surely not. There is knight D5. But there is knight H4 is an option. Looks a little bit dangerous. Knight H4. Rook E2. I'm not convinced at the moment. So knight h4, I'm not convinced. Also, there's knight e3 because actually knight h4, knight f4, but there is knight f3 there. No, there isn't knight f3. So in fact, knight e3 hits the queen with tempo here. Might be the best, and it actually it hits g2. So yeah, I think knight e3. Yeah, I think knight h4, knight f4. Right here, I think bishop g4. Would give bishop f3. Bishop g4. For bishop f3. There is bishop e2. Right, so bishop f3 here looks dangerous. I mean, if he has to give up the exchange, but rook e2, there's knight before, doesn't that win the queen? Because the queen's kind of. All right, now the queen goes to d1. All right, the queen can go to d1 or e3. I'll just take out the exchange here. Night before here. So C six. I'll take this guy. Try and undermine the sensor. Ok. 
consist. C4. I think there's always queen h2 is mate if knight g5. That's a good point. All right, let's not panic. Uh, I don't think too much has changed, right? Can I play queen e4? Queen e4? Well, if I take out that queen. Okay, thanks. No, okay. Land used to rematch. Hello. Oh, okay. Is he around? One elephant, two elephants. Three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, eight elephants, nine elephants. Okay, I think I have to port this. Anyway, we played earlier anyway, so let's give others a little chance. Stick a game in. Uh, okay. Just beast Austria. So knight f6 and bishop c5. That looks suspect to me. It looks like it's got a wrong follow-up somehow. Maybe it's okay. It might be okay. Okay. Right. Dark square bishop without the counterpart alert. Is it going to be a dark square bishop without the counterpart? No. This seems passive. This knight doesn't doesn't feel right. The position here usually to test black, you know, c3 d4 plan. The knight seems to be a bit passive here, maybe even g5 is possible or f4. f4 looks dangerous. I think I'm gonna try and exploit things with this pawn sack, a bit like Grand Prix attack in reverse because I think g5 e takes and he gets the. E4 square. Okay, this looks quite menacing now. G5 Queen E8. This is um, cementing the, the bishop in there, though. You know, King G7, H5 on, H, on G4. Right, my rook shouldn't be. The okay, so this is the kind of position I thought I could work with the um, H file, like a sort of King's Engine style position. Clap down on C5 break. And there is D4 though, potentially. So H five. Start doubling the rooks behind H G. It looks like a King's Engine style plan.
maybe this was premature. It's possible the Alicoin's gun could have been set up. If I move the rook and put the queen behind the two, that might have been more dangerous for white. Here the exchange set seems pretty dangerous though. I'm going to go for it for fun. It does weaken g4. Seems a logical exchange sack to win another pawn here. Queen g2, there's rook g3. The, the, the queen here is, seems appropriate rather than there. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah, it's a bit passive. I thought the knights, they seem to portray a passive plan. The knight, the timing, the timing, I suspected the knights are going to be passive without a critical plan against my position. I've got some vibes there from the timing, I think, and the knight placements. Some passive vibes. I'll rule out d5 for a moment. The d5 square. b5, b4. That would seem okay. b4 square. Maybe bishop e6. Okay, okay. Take care of it. No, I don't know. I think yeah maybe maybe D five. Try and keep things closed. And then try and get a blockade square. Knight E eight C seven to E six. Knight C seven to E six. Would seem rather solid. Petrosian would be proud, surely. Nice blockade. There's bishop b6, technical detail. On knight c7. There's queen c8. I'm playing knight c7 to e6. So I've taken a ninety six. So I don't know if bishop c five looks like it's a more aggressive bishop for a moment. Um, is this knight doing any mischief? Just take out. I don't think he hasn't got. Um, okay, it's like blockading knight. Scenario target d4. This f5 is scary, but you know, knight g5 to e4. Okay, he's going to get a form pawn. If I'm not careful, is that f5? Does that probably just makes things worse? g6, f5, taking knight d4, queen g4 check. f5 here. Alright, f5 here. This 
this is probably less evil I just don't like the idea of f6 coming in if ef rook f6 f5 knight g5 with with knight e4 in mind okay there's bishop e5 I have knight e4, I have rook e8 for rook e5 because of that pin. I'll threaten that immediately, rook e5. Cheapo, which is falling into. There's rook e4 here. That would seem very good. Sensor collapses. Okay. Persistence. There's rook f7 there. Let's be careful not to get zapped tactically. <laughs> okay, so knight g5 h4. There's rook e3. Can I can I get away with this? That's queen d4. Who's on f8? Got a Candle F8, oh blimey. I don't like all these tactics. What's going on here? <laughs> Why am I being tortured like this? Okay, I think I've taken out most of the clear and imminent dangers. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Grand Prix attack against the Sicilian. So Queen H four is probably quite Dangerous is on ninety five. So am I just taking a ninety five? That looks exceptionally dangerous to me. Thanks for the game, John. Yeah, that, that's a bit dangerous, that Grand Prix attack. Um, crooky. Hi there. Okay, that's Seinfeld, isn't it? Isn't that, I recognize that guy. <laughs> isn't it? I'm not seeing Seinfeld, but it's that Seinfeld, isn't it? <clears throat> All right, am I getting that wrong? Okay. I'll play this gambit here. D five. I'm trying to get this F five square. If ninety five C six, I'm on E three. And taking then D four seems strong. What would he play? I don't know what he'd play necessarily. Check the C6. Rook D1, I just take. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that does seem a tactical mistake. Thanks, Cookie. Uh, okay, Tom. Tom247. Okay, um, is one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, eight elephants, nine elephants? Bit of fast forward here. We've all here because we're running out of time for this session. Let's get a few more games in. Okay, Sammy Seller. I'm going to play the two knights here with that nasty trap you've seen. It looks actually it's probably a really interesting trap with white. Should uh, if there's a Cora question that comes up, I'm going to have to answer it. An easy trap with white, which could come up quite frequently. I mean, addicted to Cora in the recent days. I must admit, to being a Cora addict. Knight, you've got just checking this position. This is similar to before. Yes. I think this is the point of the major point of the playing the two knights is this this very move knight e5 <clears throat> look it up guys check your references wiki I think it mentions this knight takes e5 I'm pretty sure it was mentioned in uh, chess explains simple one e4 repertoire at Chessable and his book, which he made into a book, I think. This is um this is gonna be good for white this position, surely. This extra pawn here. Okay, I've got two double pawn sets. Okay, one double pawn set. So Bishop D for in castle. Okay, I don't mind taking the queens off. I've got some firepower here against d6. My castle. Looks like neat firepower against d6. Yeah. Bishop b5 looks fun. Um, okay, I think that's that's not a good idea. I was expecting Bishop d7, yeah. Okay, thanks for the game there. Uh, chess Victor. Hi there, Chess Victor 2. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, eight elephants, nine elephants, ten elephants. I'm gonna have to abort, I think. Uh, cobra. So King's engine is no, please. What did I do to Cobra? What did I do to why? Why the London system? Why? Okay, with E4. Thank you. It's something interesting with E4. Okay, thank you. Not E3. <laughs> I did mention on a Cora answer recently an easy opening for White the London system. As long as you don't play it against me on Sunday <laughs> at Chess 24. I did actually, yeah. I know I've been very helpful on Cora recently. Yeah, okay. Triffon Gabriel, if you want to check out my answers recently, I've been. 
Uh, yeah, the heat. Uh, I've been getting up at three in the morning sometimes and getting onto the Cora. You know, I I don't know. Once I get into that question and answer mindset, I I'm just I'm looking for the interesting questions. I'm looking to answer questions in an interesting way. I go off the point, but I illustrate other things. I kind of like it. It's a strange addiction. This question and answer. I think it's called the Socratic method, Socrates or something. Question and answer, Cora. Anyway, uh, but I did mention the London system as a sort of easy opening for white, and um, but with E4 it changes the whole picture quite significantly. It makes it a lot more. Um, there's a lot more squares. I feel I can get my teeth into once E4 has been played, rather than that solid triangle of the London system. So okay, knight g6, and then e4, and then I I I don't feel it's that bad for me here, as usual in the London system. Um, hmm. If I try and just use this maybe g5, is that is that worth? Is that worth it? Maybe Queen Queen H4 this Bishop G3 it can be easily repulsed though, can't it? What about F4 for F3? F4 looks rather dangerous because there's F3 here with this rook on G8. It looks like some sort of recipe for disaster. Okay, so Queen. G five. It looks as though uh am I completely wrong about this? F three here backfires on that G five. I don't want a G file backfire particularly. Knight D three, is that a liability knight if I play knight D three to F three or something? It might be a liability that knight. Bishop f5 might be the more solid of the bunch. It supports knight d3, and that f3 undermine is not so painful. I think bishop f5 might be the most least backfiring of the bunch. Am I mistaken? Knight d3 here looks with a key tempo. On C1, actually, I don't know why, why I didn't notice that it's tempo. Um, so knight H4 here. Is there G3? What about rook? Rook over here. I can take that. Okay. <clears throat> Knight h4 for h5 looks as I'm going for g2 there. In a big way. Knight e5 blocks that e pawn. I think knight h4 is more g2 focused. So F3 might be coming my way soon. F3 comes my way soon. I could just prepare for that with maybe just a solid move, you know. So if F3 just knight B4. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I can move that, I guess. Okay, now I'll maybe hit this bishop and it's not threatening me. Well, I think I mentioned taking this pawn before. I think I'll go with that. Take the pawn. And then maybe a5 just to reinforce the knight there.
F takes it. I don't think that's such a big deal. So A5 is a reinforced knight. I don't like my pieces to be loose generally. It's nice to have them cemented in. Talking of cement, I've been trying to cement new filling actually multiple times now. The filling stuff you can get. I had another attempt today at that. Um, so uh, knight g2 or f3, maybe f3. F3 looks actually rather dangerous. F3 looks dangerous. I think I have been to 2800 before, by the way. If this gets to 2800, I think I've been there before, and you guys knocked me down immediately after, I think, in the next session. So I expect to get fully smashed next time if I do get to 2800 on this game. I think I expect shedding Ford and multiple GMs <laughs> are going to be hunting me down next week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, here we go. This looks dangerous. Is there Bishop takes H2 coming up? Yes, it looks as though I can just take here and take here. Take here. All right, thanks. Twenty eight hundred. I think I'll end there. <laughs> Positive no. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. I'm uh, twenty eight hundred again. Yeah, it's been a while. Thanks. <laughs> Bit of luck there, especially yeah, one or two games as usual. Huge luck. So um, yeah, if you want to check out discount code by the way, just to re restate about this discount code, fifteen percent off for the vouch code Kings Crusher. If you want to come and try and knock me off my twenty eight hundred rating next week, or play Megan's Carlson, blah blah blah, IMs, GMs, and all the other great perks of premium membership. And Magnus Carlson has been organising some superb online tournaments recently. So Chess24 taking the lead with online chess recently. So well worth supporting. Okay, so keep safe. See you next week. Thanks very much. Thanks very much.